Hello everyone, this is Chris Hewer, and I'm coming to you here from the IBM Connect slash Lotusphere conference together, bringing social business to Lotusphere for the first time. And I'm very fortunate to be joined by Samir Patil, who you probably know. Um, but uh, I'll go ahead and let you introduce yourself briefly so everyone else who doesn't know you can okay. meet you. All right, so my name is Samir Patel, and I'm a, uh, a partner at the Service Group. Uh, we work with large to very large organizations on, on helping them understand how employee, customer, and partner relationships can be built uh, via the use of uh, social and collaborative approaches uh, and software, obviously. Well, IBM has some pretty interesting announcements yeah. here um, and has made some big progress in the past year on social business. But what are your general thoughts about where they're at and where social business is at broadly? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, let's talk about uh, the broad social business thing first and then hone it on IBM. I think, in my mind, uh, the first innings of social is over. Um, and we're at a point where, um, you know, a lot of the, there are two kinds of organizations out there. I'm, I'm speaking generally, right? There's those that uh, believe in their core that if they don't collaborate, they won't do well. And then there's a, a whole other bucket of companies that are so focused on the bottom line, they're focused on charging past, and they're you know they're optimizing as they go, um, and they're looking for much more tangible. Uh, benefits in terms of, uh, you know, and, and applying the same metrics that they've had when they bought CRM and when they bought supply chain and when they bought all those different things. So the late majority, basically. Yeah. In, in the late, Moore's yeah, model, right? Yeah, exactly. And so yeah. I think the, you know, we're at a point where the first innings was those, the ones who, they didn't really need a lot of convincing. Um, and they were looking, they've always been looking to enhance how they collaborate. And here's some amazing innovations that they can use. Uh, now we're moving into, I think, and I, you know, I, I call it the, uh, you know, the grown-up version of how social can actually work uh, to appeal to a much wider berth of, uh, of end customers. And that's not going to come if we can't effectively um, start to help people understand how their core business processes need to be re-engineered uh, in a way that blends traditional process technology and process and, and, and closed workflow ways of working mm -hmm. and the unstructured ways of uh, bringing the right networks together, the people together as you're getting through your nine to five day, right? Uh, now is when the premiums in our business will come now where people would look at this more as a process engineering project and not as just a let me go put a tool in place and you know magically people will come um, and we can start having real discussions on how careful use of social can actually reduce risk massive risk inside how we operate inside the companies today and also to cut costs and drive revenue so i think we're in that zone now right but you, you, but we talk about business process engineering and yeah. it's a very mechanical process yeah. typically when it's drawn out like that yeah. and the big difference with social is bringing the emotive and personal elements into work yeah I mean, so I think, how is that going to impact so it? i think you know here's the deal right i mean i think you know the the, the traditional way to, to 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 think of the value of software and using technology to make your business better has been um, to start to map workflows and you start getting into defining how do you actually compete piece by piece in finished projects, right? I think this is not a social thing. This is massively how transformation in organizations, I think, is going to uh, happen and social is going to play a big role, uh, which is where we, stop, we start looking at every individual enterprise persona. And we, you know, the talent management professional, the HR rep, the sales professional, and start to look at exactly what is it that they do from nine to five. And we'll start to realize that all this process stuff we've done for the last three decades barely covers 10%, 15% of the days. I mean, which, which sales rep lives in their CRM system? They're on yeah. the phone. They're on email. They're looking for people. They're getting into meetings. You know, and when they're done with all of that, they go to the CRM system and just make an update and they're done. Right? Social is about filling the, that 85% if it's done correctly. If you look at it that way, it's massive. Right? As yeah. an opportunity. So I don't look at it as how we traditionally looked at process re-engineering. And you're right. That, that was a very mechanical, systematic view. But when we start to map the right use of structured and unstructured around your 9 to 5 day, you'll see why there are massive gaps and inefficiencies in how we work. And it's not because our process stuff is bad. It's because we haven't really paid attention to the other 85%. Gotcha. And so that, I think, when you look at that holistically, that's the opportunity for businesses, that's the opportunity for the software industry, for the services industry, and it starts to really rethink how, uh, 
how we start using. Well, I, I like the, the the generals and war analogies here a little bit in terms of looking at the reality on the ground. Mm-hmm. You know, and I talk about the map that yeah. the, if you go to the state line between Florida and Georgia, right. there's not a line. No. It's it, so actually looking at the reality of what yeah. we're dealing with instead of the uh, implied reality we want to have. So how are managers who are used to controlling things yeah. opening up to look at the reality of how humans behave and interact? Yeah. And, and who, maybe one or the two of the good examples of who's done this well. I think we're at the early stages. So I think uh, you know, you're starting to see uh, two, when you look at that second innings that I talk about, you're going to see two broad uh, sparks that have people start to consider this, right? One is, is a lot of, I mean, what we saw uh, with the TD Bank example. This wasn't about just getting social. This was tectonic shifts in the banking industry uh, where they looked at four or five different things that they wanted to do. One of which was people connectivity. So it's a broader yes. strategy where social and connectivity is one execution plan. Right. Yes. Uh, in their case uh, it was we've been through a lot of M&A. We don't need to explain to you what's happened to the banking industry since 2008. Yeah. Uh, we've, you know, as an industry, they've lost the trust of the customer. Gotcha. Um, the customer's notion of purchasing preferences, power, information, knowledge has substantially changed with the social web. How do you start to harness those realities? Um, and, and you're going to have to do many things. You're probably going to have to hire better people for customer service. I mean, that's not a social problem. That's an HR issue. Gotcha. But uh, the way you federate... Uh, the the thinking, the new relationships, the better way to manage customer support, the understanding of how to connect the inside outside, social plays a huge role. So I think though it's those kinds of case studies where we'll start to see um, big improvement. The second one is uh, not something as titanic as that, but uh, you know core process improvement. I, I run sales ops. Um, you know I I don't have a handle yeah. on repeatability. You know, you, you know the professional services business better than anybody. For every single time that I have a, an infrastructure in place that lets me reuse artifacts that have been created, my margins are better yes. against a fixed project. Simple, right? Um, those are much better value propositions to a whole set of managers and buyers than promise me if you use this, you know, you'll share better and productivity and all that stuff. Those, are, those will come, right? Yeah. So when we start to get our arms around this, it's not going to be... You know, just throwing an agency at the problem, or a, it is it is understand deep understanding of how supply chains work, how HR works. So it's a it's going to be a partnership between those people who focused on domains and those Actually. who understand social. Well, what are the domains? Um, and we're running out of time, unfortunately. Yeah. But I really want to hit on this: is the, the relationship management and, sure. and and interacting with customers and yeah. customer. You know, I've heard a lot of people talking about customer experience management, yeah. how they're doing that. But really, um, there's been a lot of talk about social CRM, and there has been a lot of meat really yeah. what's really happening with social and CRM and yeah. is that a reality is that potential what are we looking at yeah I mean I think the problem is is that you know there was there's just been too much hyperbole or there's too many analogies being drawn between social media uh, and the and ma- and business right and they're two different things in many ways yeah. and uh, there's there are some there's some um, non-negotiable realities about the social customer which starts to help organizations understand how to deal with this phenomenon and I spoke about that's what I spoke about yesterday right their expectations around how they want to engage with businesses the sheer amount of knowledge they have about you as a business before you even know that they're a prospect yeah right yeah um, the level of latency that we all expect on the social web is also now spilling over to how we expect businesses to deal with us if I expect you to reply to a tweet in a reasonable amount of time. I expect that when I respond to businesses as well. Not saying solve complex problems, at least acknowledge that you're working on it. Um, globalization is another massive trend where um, you know we can't, uh, when we're selling into emerging markets, for example, they want all our innovation, our global innovation. How well are we threaded as organizations to really be able to deliver on the promise to customers? Those are the broader tenants around where the, the, the nature of the R and CRM yeah. changes, right? And that's where we'll start to get our arms around what's happening on the social web and how do our internal processes change? How do we break the firewalls uh, between the end customer and that expert hiding in a cube somewhere who's really, you know, knows everything there is to know about the product, who's been hidden 
for the last 30 years from the customer. I, I think it's clue, ta- clue Train principle number 67 or so, <laughs> which is you've got some cool people working your yeah, company. Can you them. let them out and yeah, play? Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. I, so I think when we start to get our arms around the impact, which is why this conference is a great place to talk about it, because IBM is doing so much around the internal collaboration, uh, customers need to start to understand the value of collaboration, not just because it's good to collaborate, but why customers and your prospects are going to expect that. And, and I think there's no better... Um, you know, excuse my French, kick in the rear, than a realization that the customer contract's changing and we've yes. got to do something about it, right? Yeah. So that's why I'm excited about the next four or five years because I think we'll start seeing these meaningful uses of it um, as opposed to just, you know, social media, yeah. which has been intertwined with social CRM and social business. And I think that's where we dilute the whole uh, value proposition of this. So we're here at IBM, who really has pushed out social business. Salesforce is working on social enterprise. Is there a difference? I mean, it's it's different philosophies and approaches in terms of how these organizations are approaching it, right? Each of them is looking at their uh, core strength and core differentiator in terms of how they're approaching the market. Um, IBM has been in the content business forever, has been in the, with WebSphere, has been in the integration business forever. They understand process, they understand content, they've been in the email business. Uh, they've got a lot of pedigree uh, in terms of starting to use social as something that, in, that, that works its way through all these core things that aren't going away. Yes. Right? Salesforce has an absolutely different um, a- approach to it. Uh, but I think, and we'll see, we're going to see many more. I think what will happen, what will ultimately happen is, is that we'll all take these different roads, but we'll land up in a, in a, in a market that is far bigger than the one right now, I believe, for software. Um, and something that, for the first time in a decade, uh, gives a CIO a compelling reason to really relook at their technology stack with cloud, with social, and with obviously the, the changes in mobile. So, you know, we're blessed, I think, to be doing what we're doing. Yeah, very good time blessed. to be doing this totally. work. Absolutely. Totally. Well, thank you so much, Anytime. Samir. Very nice Anytime. to see thank you again you. in chat. And uh, thank you all very much. This is Chris Hewer for Social Media Clubhouse coming to you from uh, Orlando, Florida, IBM Connect Lotus Sphere 2012.